Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I have a lot to show and a lot to talk about today. Um, I have guests from the Missoula Agent Service talking about a jewelry sale that's happening on June 10th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. that Saturday. So it's a week from Saturday. So we'll talk a little bit more about that with Ann Andre and um, Kim Hutchinson when they come on the show later. Uh, I got some um, updates in terms of city council. They're going to be talking about... Uh, the purchase and the transition of the Mountain Water Company to Missoula, which will now be called the Missoula Water Company. So they'll talk a little bit about that, and they'll finalize that during a city council uh, special meeting on Thursday. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. I got my last, very last stop motion animation um, of the of the series. So um, it's part of my stop motion anthology, Scott Ramp's stop motion anthology. I'm going to end it today. So today's the last day where you're going to see any stop animation, Lego, whatever, based on the storyline. I don't know. It really depends. I've kind of burnt out of doing stop animation. I'll talk a little bit more about that in some of our summer camps. But first, let's talk about some weather that's um, um, happening here and around Missoula. We have that uh, severe thunderstorm happening tonight. You have that 70% chance of thunderstorms happening tonight with a low of 55 degrees. Your high highs are going to be 87 so as it gets hotter outside the temperatures and the air and then of course you have all those electrodes and things coming together to I, I'm trying to explain something that I don't any know anything about but it definitely um, thunderstorms happen when there is a big uh, uh, warm up that happens in the area um, when you just kind of like got to have a kind of a cool kind of weather time but type of temperatures in the spring so you can expect those highs to be 87 today your low is going to be 55 and then by Thursday you have that 70 60 percent chance of showers with a high of 71 and then pretty much staying that way throughout the rest of the week and then weekend um, on Saturday you can see a high of 82 degrees and it's going to look like it's going to be a beautiful mostly sunny day on your Saturday so um, I'll get more on your weekend report uh, for in terms of weather a little bit later so in terms of local news if you haven't already heard yesterday was the day the Missoula Food Bank opened with over 6.6 .6 million dollars um, invested um, through donations and many different organizations the uh, new um, Missoula Food Bank, which opened at uh, 1720 Wyoming Street, which is just kitty corner of West Side Lanes. And uh, yeah, you can't miss it. It's like right there. It's really awesome. Um, a lot of effort was put into this. Um, so this is to offer um, way more to offer than the old location that's on 3rd Street, including a modern learning kitchen, a community meeting room uh, with a video screen, a kid center, a big indoor waiting room, a large office space, and um, a commercial kitchen area and storage. Um, all proceeds were provided by 250 separate donors and uh, making the food bank that they just had completely debt free. Uh, the food bank was uh, financed with $6.5 million in the new markets tax credits with the help of the Montana and Idaho Community Development Corporation and First Security Bank. In the state news, uh, Governor Steve Bulk has signed a bill giving Montanans the option to purchase a state driver's license or identification card that can be used on board flights and access federal facilities. State officials refused to comply with the Real ID Act in the past, expressing concern that it has jeopardized the security of Montanans by creating a national database of documents. Senate Bill 366, sponsored by um, Jill uh, Conure, a Democrat from Helena, makes compliance optional for Montanans who already have a passport or are concerned about the state keeping copies of personal dat documents. According to Homeland Security, Montana is not in compliance with the Real ID Act, um, and federal agencies may not accept driver's license and identification cards from Montana. Uh, secure driver's license and identification documents are vital component of the holistic national security strategy. Law enforcement must be able to rely on the government issued identification documents and know that the bearer of such a document is who he or she claims to be real ID is um, a coordinated effort by the states and federal government to improve reliability. Um, do, do, do. And that's uh, basically what I got from the Homeland Security page and talking about the Montana's um, non-compliance in terms of real ideas. In national news, if you haven't already heard, um, in Portland over the weekend, um, a man uh, by by the name of Jeremy Joseph Christian, um, um, he he was harassing two Muslim teen girls on a train in Portland and um, a couple of Samaritans came up and said and kind of like were uh, defending the uh, Muslim girls 
and they got stabbed and he killed two of the uh, people of the Samaritans. So Jeremy um, Joseph Christian went to court Tuesday and invoked the First Amendment right by saying, get out if you don't like free speech and you call it terrorism, I call it patriotism, you hear me, die. A word spoken to many protesters in and out of the courtroom in Portland and if you hear the uh, quote from there you can hear uh, the people in the audience and one of the people in the courtroom that day was uh, one of the um, um, people who uh, were stabbed um, by um, Christian. Um, so, of course, Christian was arraigned on several charges, including two counts of aggravated murder, attempted murder, two counts of secondary in intimidation, and being a felon in uh, possession of the restricted weapons, police say. And other, other news in terms of this is that Portland mayor is uh, calling for a cancellation of two right-wing rallies and marches scheduled for the next few weeks, giving a recent stabbing in the city by the suspect who... Uh, um, who police say has expressed extremist ideology. Uh, the ACLU of Oregon protests that these groups should have the right to free speech regardless of what actions are taken by a lone man. So that's kind of what's happening in and around uh, Missoula, uh, in and around Missoula, Montana, in the United States. Um, if you haven't already heard, um, another interesting, um, I'm going to kind of leave um, some news on a little f interesting note, is that in Australia, Ben and Jerry's uh, have refused to do um, same scoop ice creams to help, uh, to basically to protest um, Australia's um, uh, until Australia has same-sex marriage so they are basically preventing people from ordering two scoops of the same ice cream at their Ben & Jerry store so um, that's pretty much it for all the news that's happening I have an art clip for you guys and this is from the Zootown Arts Community Center which uh, this is this will be, be the last two times I'll be showing this art clip um, most of the art installations of the Zach come and go pretty quickly, so you guys want to go check it out as soon as possible. And when I come back, I'll have uh, Kim Hutchinson and Anna Andre from Missoula Agent Service talking about a jewelry sale that's coming up in, um, in Missoula. Hey guys, I'm here with Kim and Ann, and he, you guys are here to talk about a jewelry sale that's coming up on June 10th, and that's happening from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Is it going to be at the Missoula Agent Services? Actually, no. Um, our, it is our fourth annual Wear It Again jewelry sale for Missoula Aging Services, but the sale takes place at St. Anthony Church, and um, as you said, it starts at 8 a.m., goes till 3.30 p.m. this year. So um, it's really a big event and a lot of fun. And since you guys uh, come on my show once a month, you usually uh, uh, do your uh, mission statement. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, some of this also goes to benefit many of the programs at Missoula Agent Services, which... It does, Scott, and thanks for mentioning that because our, our mission at the Missoula Aging Services is to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and the people who care for them. And as such, this sale is a benefit for those programs and services. And Kim, you could mention a couple of those. Yeah, so the, the sale will you know lift up programs like Meals on Wheels, which uh, is a pretty well-known program that delivers uh, meals every day to homebound individuals, older adults. Um, 
respite program, which provides a, a much needed break for family caregivers. And then um, another example is our senior companion program, which um, for other homebound individuals, um, you know, helps them get out and run errands and just be more independent and in their homes. So, um, and a bunch of other programs are on our website at missoulaagingservices.org. So you can kind of peruse and see what all we do. Cool. And you guys are kind of sporting some of the jewelry oh. that you're going to be uh, um, selling and um, trading as well? Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't do any trading necessarily. You know, people, the community um, donates the jewelry throughout okay. the year. I mean, even in the fall, donations are coming in. And we're, we're really grateful. And then the, the volunteer team that... Um, Kind of heads up this sale actually they start tagging and sorting and cleaning in january um and so it's it's really a year-round effort it is it's huge it it they have work parties starting in about january weekly and this core team of volunteers very dedicated folks who love this sale like i said this is our fourth annual one so they've been doing this now for this is their fourth year they tag all of the jewelry, price it, clean it. Um, if it needs appraisal, we do get a number of very, very nice pieces, fine jewelry, sterling silver, and we have an appraiser in town locally who donates his time mm. to um, help set a fair price for it. What you'll find, besides lots of bling, <laughs> I mean, we, we came sporting some bling today, but a lot of costume jewelry, a lot of uh, silver, um, mm -hmm. fine jewelry, as I mentioned, accessories, just clip-on earrings, screw-on earrings, and of course pierced earrings, men's accessories, children's jewelry, and it's all sorted and categorized, which makes this sale, I mean, it's huge. Yep. You've so got, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. There is something for everybody. And you can walk in the door and browse tables full of jewelry, and yet everything is very easy to find because of the way they've sorted it and categorized it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, year after year, we see people kind of walking out with their arms full of bags and, you know, yeah, they, they bring their friends and their neighbors, and it's just a, a really good social event, too, for, um, yeah. For the community. It, it, it is. It's a lot of fun. We get kids there. Um, we get um, people who, as Kim said, they, they literally, they walk out with bags of jewelry. Wow. And that's because you can get so much, so many good bargains there. So it's something to, um, you know, grab a cup of coffee in the morning, bring a couple friends, and just browse jewelry for for an hour or so. Um, like I said, we we have brought in a few examples, but these are just <laughs> among thousands. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, Kim was also mentioning that. Uh, she she got on board with Majelis and Service in her second and it was the second year of the um, Julia sale, but it was she was surprised it was the second year because it it, it felt like it's been going on forever. It was a well oiled machine. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Our, the volunteer team. Well, put it this way, we couldn't do it without them. It's one of those things where the time and um, energy and expertise and dedication to doing this that it takes to get it done, it just couldn't happen if we had to expend staff time to do it. So these volunteers who make it happen and who work the day of the sale are just incredible people and we owe a lot of thanks to them. Last year we raised over $17,000 in this short day of, of jewelry sale. So um, we're hoping for at least that much this year. It, it really is a wonderful benefit for the community. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, where can people find more information? Well, um, the the website that you were probably just showing, um, MissoulaAgingServices.org, there's a whole page dedicated to the jewelry sale. You can learn about you know some of the volunteers and see some pictures from last year. Um, we'll also be posting to our Facebook and our Twitter accounts pretty regularly in the next week. And, um, or you can call us at 728-7682. Um, get some more information, but the jewelry sale, um, one more time, is 217 Tremont. It's at St. Anthony Church, um, kind of in the Slant Streets, Woodford, Tremont. Mm -hmm. And you can get there by just going to uh, get off of Brook Street. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and there'll be plenty of parking. You'll see signs probably starting on Brook Street and kind of directing you there. Um, but it's Saturday, June 10th, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., an extra hour this year. So. 
Well, thanks. Is there anything else you want to say about this? Just come out and have fun and support the older adults in our community um, who we serve through our programs. That's what it's all about. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Um, once again, this is Kim and Ann. They have a uh, uh, Missoula Asian Service is having a jewelry, share, uh, jewelry sale um, on June 10th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at St. Anne's. Say Anthony. 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 Yes. <laughs> Anne's uh, husband. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I really Thank appreciate you, you coming down. And uh, I'll be back after this. Uh, all these new programs that are going to be on MCAT. modernization or westernization and military buildup. Um, at that point under western pressure the death penalty against Christianity was lifted but the religion remained illegal. Now again you can imagine as I mentioned in my opening remarks to have this wholesale 180 degree shift in Japan's posture to the rest of the world. They're closed for two and a half centuries. Contact with foreigners is punishable by death. Um, people couldn't travel overseas. All of a sudden now, foreigners are being invited in. Western technology, Western learning, Western language. And this put, this caused tremendous political turmoil, social turmoil, uh, economic change, and um, uh, was the, you know, created tremendous splits within society. And, and at that time, um, this woman who had been traveling through, who had given birth, i have forgotten to mention her name earlier, it was Spider. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, her, her family was able to rejoin with her and, and kind of reunite and it was really powerful in that, in that we, we I, I got to witness a family that had been broken by, by different issues and, and seeing them reunited uh, you know, with, with a new baby and with her son and her husband back. And at that point, it was kind of up to me if I wanted to leave or not. And so I did. I came back to Missoula, my home. The, um, um, for the nurses that, that are embedded as faculty, again, in these schools, um, they're doing classroom and clinical instruction. They're also helping build out the curricula, um, especially if there's a, um, these are systems that are um, relatively weak compared to what you would find here. So for example, it's not uncommon, I'm thinking of Uganda, those of you who are going to Uganda, there's one school in the north that has 1,200 nursing students and six faculty. And so you can imagine um, how do you teach in that kind of environment, how do you take, how do you take a day away, or what if you get malaria? The gaps in the faculty are, are huge, and, um, and still they're open open for business.
hey guys if you guys are excited for uh, music like that you're gonna be seeing a whole bunch of that on MCAT channel 189 throughout this month and the next um, when we highlight a lot of the uh, the schools and um, their schools kind of like their final performances um, high the high schools did a bunch of MCPS uh, Missoula County Public Schools did a whole bunch of their um, final concerts for the summer there are a lot of touching moments with a lot of the music in terms of because a lot of the seniors are gonna be graduating this year and uh, graduation is this Saturday for a lot of the high school uh, seniors as well I'll talk a little bit more about that on Saturday uh, on Friday as well uh, because um, one of our own teens is gonna be graduating that day as well uh, maybe I'll have them on the show on Friday to just be like, how does it feel to be graduating in Missoula? Okay, see you later. Get out. Um, so um, if you want to know more information about those programs and more, you can log on to our website, um, MCAT.org. It is Missoula's Community Media Resource. Um, it's our new slogan, new, uh, just new brand, new logo, new everything. Um, and one of the things that we also did for MCAT is when we rebranded is that we uh, also showed our, um, we kind of go out and do community events. And one of the community events that we did just last weekend was MISCON, which, MISCON, which was Missoula's Science Convention, um, or you can consider it Missoula's Comic Con in a way. Um, it's where a bunch of uh, nerds gathered together and just hung out and do, did some stuff um, and just kind of showed off, talk, did some panels. I talked a little bit on Friday about some of the panelists. They had some artists, they had some actors. They had a whole bunch of people come down, but the one thing that um, MCAT uh, did was um, we got to do some VR there as well. So throughout the weekend, f starting on Friday, we pretty much were there at the Missoula um, um, Missoula's Holiday Inn Express, which was uh, the Brooks and Browns just down Patty Street, and uh, we were set up there with virtual reality pretty much all weekend long. And the big proponents of this was a bunch of our uh, young staff members here at MCAT, which was Neil Wells, um, Justin, um, Jack Catmull, Josh Cook, and they all kind of manned the station. I, I went there a couple times on there over the weekend just to kind of relieve them here and there, just give them a little break in between their long shifts of working for MCAT, kind of promoting MCAT and getting people to sign up and doing some um, summer camps as well. Um, and speaking of summer camps, MCAT will is doing a bunch of summer camps uh, this summer. We're doing five. That's one more than last year. Um, and it's uh, highlighting our um, many different uh, arrays of camps from our animation to zombie makeup movie making. Um, we also have a media camp, which uh, we've done in the past and in con um, con conjunction with the animation camp. Um, one year we couldn't um, do one thing, so we decided to be like, hey, why don't we just go to a whole bunch of media outlets and just call it media camp. So the whole idea of media camp is that kids get an experience not just in one media platform, but in multiple media platforms. Just kind of give a taste of a little bit of everything while still at the same time giving them create the creative freedom that they need to kind of get started in terms of of television production or online YouTube podcasting all sorts of cool things that kids get to do and that's going to be happening uh, June 19th I believe um, I keep on forgetting the date yeah it's June 19th through the 23rd is the first camp there's still plenty of room for the kids to get involved we have the Raptors of the Rockies wildlife filmmaking where we get to go to Raptors of the Rocky with Kate Davis and that's happening from June 26th through the 30th um, zombie movie making camp is happening from July 31st through August 4th that's completely full I don't know why I'm advertising it so forget I just said that uh, animation camp is from July 10th to July 14th or you can also check it out from July 17th to the 21st it's basically carbon copies of one another um, we, you, we usually have the second camp for because we always have an overflow of kids for the very first camp of the week so um, it's always nice to have a secondary camp just for any spillover or any kids who can't make it one week versus another so that's some of our uh, camps and you can go to mcat.org you click on that summer camp link and it kind of shows you all the summer camps and you can register online and it brings you to our submittable page and it's a nice way just to um, get um, signed up for MCAT in general. Um, MCAT also has a uh, media resource on Submittable, which allows people to re request an event recording, which, as you saw from those um, videos that I just showed, which kind of highlights all of Missoula um, in terms of um, people who ask um, MCAT to come down and film their events, causes, rallies, or concerts. Um, so if you guys are interested in doing that, you can always call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542 MCAT. You can also email us 
MCAT at MCAT.org and we can give you the link and you can show you exactly what you guys need to do to get your program on the air. Um, two weeks from today is orientation. So in two weeks, 5.30 p.m., we have we host an orientation for any organization or individual who wants to come down and make their own television program or learn how to make their own uh, video cast, their vlog, anything like that, just to kind of uh, get them started. We are a media resource, so we t tell people how to do all that and more. And also, um, if you want to learn more information about my show, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it all out. Um, you can um, subscribe to me on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Pretty simple. Um, you can see uh, past episodes. You can see um, old videos and more. Um, you can also um, see a bunch of uh, the flagship Friday video of the week. Um, something I showed last Friday, but I didn't necessarily attribute the flagship program because it was mostly a bunch of teens you know, punching each other in the dick. Um, but then, of course, uh, dubbing stuff is one of my favorite things. I'll keep that going on here. But I just kind of wanted to show you that I'll have the, uh, the complete uh, movie from my stop motion anthology on my website so you guys can watch it anytime. And also, you can watch it on um, YouTube as well. So, without further ado, here's the very last, last stop motion video that I'm going to be doing of the week of ever just kind of ending it. It's a nice way to end it. It's the 31st of May and I'm kind of uh, burnt out of doing stop animation. But it ends nicely and I think this kind of wraps up the whole entire uh, stop motion uh, series that I started in um, November maybe early December. I don't even remember when I started, but there's like over 20 plus videos of it. So it's like I've been doing it for like six months. So without further ado, here's the, pr the premiere of the series finale of um, Stop Motion, the last part two. Last time on Stop Motion episode colon, the last part one. <laughs> How do you sleep at night? Are you listen here? What the? No, wait. You're a monster! You're a... What's your problem? Hey, what's up, guys? Who are these guys? Yeah. He gets funnier every time! And speaking of surrounded... <gasps> you guys are surrounded. And now, the epic conclusion. Ah! Oh. Ah! Alright, ah! calm down, calm down. We have this place surrounded. Hey, yeah! <gasps> Yeehaw! Let's get out of here! Right. Uh -oh. We're taking this city back one pirate at a time. Yarr. This uniform doesn't suit you. Yarr. Clear out, you guys. Guys, wait up! <laughs> I didn't know there was a ninja gang. Now you guys listen up. You're gonna have to go through me to get to your friend. Enough talk. Anyone else? Let's rush him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Piece of cake. All right, boys. We can do this if we work together. I uh, reckon. Can't fight us all. Come on, boys. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Come at me with all uh, you got. Wait, big boy. Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait. Oh. Your jokes aren't that funny. The element of surprise. Dude. If you're gonna use that on me, you better hope you're faster than me. Man, I don't need this to kick your butt. Come at me. I've been training all my life. And you, where do you get your training? Police Academy? <laughs> I don't need much to kick your butt. I fight with justice. <laughs> and I thought he was the comedian. <laughs> what the? <sighs> He's right through there, sir. Take five, son. I've got this. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Whoa! Huh, I've been looking all over for you. You came here alone? <laughs> you can thank me later. Hey, buddy. Hey, yeah, you. Up on top of there. Get your butt down ah! here. Whoa, uh, whoa. Uh, yeah. You gotta stay back. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, uh, I gotta go. Oh, uh. Where's Uncle Ben when I need him? <laughs> you just threw him away like some kind of can of soda. What's your deal? Don't worry, Dad. Thanks, I've sweetie. got you. No! <gasps> look out! No! no! You. No. Oh, man. Yeah. Huh? Oh. Hey, honey. Honey. Are you okay? She'll be just fine. She just got the wind knocked out of her. Yeah, that's nice, but... 
It's all my fault. I should never put on the costume. Should never have fought all this. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for me. Man, don't you go talk like this. We sacrificed so much for you. Through your example, you inspired all these people to stand up for what is right. I didn't ask them to fight. No one asked you to fight either. Do you realize who I am? You're the bad guy. I'll keep it simple. Well, there you go. There's all that and that and done. It's the last part, too. You guys can see it on YouTube later on after these words, if you're watching this online on YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it any time. And then I'll have, like, a Final Cut where I just basically um, edit on Final Cut <laughs> of everything, kind of like I'll piece it all together and I'll kind of send it out as a little package deal so you can watch the whole thing all in one shot. So uh, moving on, um, I got some stuff to talk about in terms of just a little city council tease that's happening today and tomorrow as well. Um, just kind of like um, highlighting everything that's um, going to be talked about today, this afternoon for all of the committee meetings. The uh, dub In the Parks and Conservation, the uh, w WMRC property is um, situated between Lower Mill Creek Road and the Bitterroot River and contains important uh, repar riparian and wetland habitat, sorry about that. Uh, the p property consists of um, cottonwood forest, um, emergent wetland, and numerous ponds and uh, sloughs, which uh, provide wetland habitat for numerous species, include two rare species, plant species, which is called a tooth cup, and Columbia water meal. Um, the property is also home to a variety of nesting and migra migratory birds and mammal species. Um, th and they are asking for $12,000 um, to help preserve and help keep this um, project going. Um, Public Works, Russell Street pre-construction prep work. So MDT um, is par partially funds 75% direct construction costs for relocating existing utility lines if they if the project impacts the, t uh, the utility utility line. So the idea is that when they are going to be working on the Russell Street and hopefully the Russell Street Bridge is that they're going to be um, working with uh, relocating some existing utility lines, sewer mains and all that stuff. Uh, the Russell Street Roadway Reconstruction Project will affect their location of the water and sewer mains and um, in, an, in adjacent to the Russell Street Corridor, um, the uh, city of Missoula will pay for engineering services for the relocation work and 25% of construction costs. Uh, this match money will come from each of the utility enterprise funds uh, for water and sewer. The utility relocation works as part of a roadway reconstruction is, ex is expected to occur during the 2018 construction season. So they're just going to be working on some pre-prep work, just kind of getting everything moving forward for the Russell Street and hopefully the Russell Street Bridge, which they also are planning on replacing completely in the next couple of years or years year it, it really depends it's um they're going to be working on three different bridges right now they're working on madison um the next bridge is i'm um, going to be russell street and then i believe the last bridge they're going to work on is higgins depending upon how long it takes to work on russell street so there um um the city of Missoula is doing a special city council meeting on June 1st, which is happening tomorrow um, at 3 p.m. And the city council uh, will finalize the transfer of Mountain Water Company after uh, last week's meeting. That really didn't happen last week's meeting. Um, so uh, the the city gave their 48-hour notice to the organizations, Liberty and um all those guys and to say, hey, okay, we're ready to do the transfer. Let's get these things finished. Let's cross the T's and dot the lowercase J's and all that stuff. Um, and of course, I'll get to these meetings, um, talk a bit a little bit more about them in my city council report on Friday. So you'll learn more about that later on in the day. Um, I have a brand, uh, I don't have a brand new art clip. I always say I have a brand new art clip, but um, if you've seen these episodes, you can kind of see that there is a consistency with a lot of these art clips, but I do have a nice little art clip from the Mizzou Art Museum, and this is uh, Nexus. Um, the this is uh, this is something I've been playing for a little while now, and this is the Layla and uh, Rudy Audio Family Collection, and it's going to be on until June twenty fourth. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Here are some of the events that are happening in and around Missoula for you guys who are looking to do some things in the next couple days. Um, today, um, if you guys are interested in learning Excel instead of lying about it on your resume, you can actually learn Excel at the Missoula Public Library starting at 12.30 today. Um, introduction to basic features of Microsoft Excel. Topics include entering data and formulas. The class assumes uh, the students have some experience with Windows and using a mouse. Uh, registration requires uh, by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721 uh, 721-6. 2665, and this is happening from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. if you're curious when this event ends. Um, Middle School Writers Group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library, and this is groups age 6 to 9, um, grades 6 to 9, not ages 6 to 9, sorry about that. Um, it's every Wednesday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. It's in the boardroom. It's for writers in grades 6 through 9 who want to get uh, who want to get and give good feedback, play with words, and eat a little chocolate along the way. So book signing with Theodore Wal uh, Waddell is Missoula Art Museum. Visit with celebrated Montana painter and sculptor Theodore Waldell as he signs copies of his newest publications, um, My Montana Paintings and Sculptures. Um, from 1959 to 2016, written by Rick Newby, the uh, book signing takes place on Wednesday today from 4 to 5.30 p.m. in the lobby of the Missoula Art Museum. And he's known best for his abstract expressionist paintings of animals placed in the western landscape. The publication includes an archive of the original artwork, letters, and journal entries of Waddell, as well as the essays by Montana curator, critics, scholars, poets, and fiction writers. Uh, the copies of the book will be available for purchase at the Mann Bookstore, and works by Waddell will be in the MAMS collection can be on view in the tra Travel Montana Lobby from May 31st to July 1st. Uh, okay, so Kids Bounce Time at the Missoula Sp Indoor Sports Arena um, provides an open space for the entire family, includes the inflated park for kids aged 2 to 12, and then open play hours are from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., and it's Monday through Thursday. So there's plenty of things to go for kids to do, especially in the late afternoon when um, summer is coming and there's not much going on there and you want something quick. Um, so bowling for animals. If you love animals, um, you go to Westside Lanes at 5.30 p.m. tonight, you bring the whole family, it's $15 per person, and you get to go bowling. It's shoe rental entries and door prizes, all sorts of stuff that just for that $15 for the whole fam, uh, it's $15 per person, but that's kind of like encompasses everything. Um, it's a local nonprofit that rescues exotic animals. Um, they're Animal Wonders, and if you haven't heard of Animal Wonders, Animal Wonders is a great um, organization. They've come on AMCAT plenty of times, shown off some of the exotic birds. Um, and animals that are rescue animals. They're not animals that are just like, oh, let's, this looks pretty and exotic. Let's take them and show them off. No, they, they're animals that have been in and through systems. Um, a lot of times um, when zoos close and stuff like that, many organizations are like, okay, what are we going to do with this uh, animal? So this is kind of like what Animal Wonders does is that they get these animals, they collect these animals, and they need money to help provide for these animals and also um, educate people on the importance of preserving these animals' habitats. Otherwise, they will never no longer exist. So there's going to be, uh, um, that's going to be a nice little uh, bowling for animals. So if you guys are interested in doing that, that's happening at 5.30 p.m. today at Westside Lanes. So support some of those animals. Um, sharing the groove, the uh, uh, at the top hat, if you like the music of Fish, um, you can enjoy some of their uh, um, happy hour specials with some of that funky music um, and just hang out and listen to music and also get a nice little punch card so you guys can, if you fill out a punch card, you get tickets to go to many of the shows provided by the top hat and w the Wilma Theater, depending upon the price tag. Um, the Imagination Jam Society, it's public jam at the Imagination Brewing Company. Um, you get a jam out with the people at the Imagination um, Brewing Company. Um, there's Top House is going to be at the Great Burn Brewery. It's going to be acoustic music, country dance lesson with Kathy Clark. And, of course, you have all those um, karaoke's at Badlander, Eagles Lodge, and Sunrise Saloon. That's happening tonight. Thursday, um, here are some of the things that are happening on for your Thursday. I have to pause to initiate a transition. <laughs> Summer reading program begins. Um, Missoula Public Library is doing a summer reading program for adults and children today, um, which actually from their um, from the events um, page 
today means tomorrow, which starts at 10 a.m. And stop by a reference desk for information about the reading program for adults. And then, of course, you can stop by the children's desk for more information about readings for program for children. You have Jumbo Art Jamboree at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting tomorrow afternoon at 2.15 p.m. And it goes from 5.30 p.m. Students will build, paint, collage, and draw masterpieces of life-size proportions. They will work together to build ecosystem, imaginary characters, and their nece uh, necessary uh, accoutrements. Ooh that will uh, be displayed in the end of the year. Um, it's going to be the WAAP exhibition. So it's kind of like a youth art, um, um, life-size proportion type of deal. So they'll be doing it later on at the end of this year as well. So kids and people can do this. It's the Jumbo Art Jamboree at the Zootown Arts Community Center. Uh, computer electronics in the Makerspace, Missoula Public Library. Makerspace is a great place. I just want you guys to know it's like one of the coolest, fun places to go to. It's a small room, but it's really cool because they have a 3D printer. They also have a 3D camera, so it takes pictures of a 3D object. So if you want to take a picture of yourself and make a 3D representation of yourself, Makerspace is the place to be. It takes forever to do any 3D printing, pr printing in the Makerspace. So if you're going to do any 3D printing, make it pretty small, short, and sweet. But other than that, you might um, see if they can do like a 3D printing, kind of go overnight and see if you guys can get it as well. The only thing you really have to pay for is the raw material and maybe the um, energy that's being expelled by printing your um, things in the makerspace. So just letting you guys know about that. Lego Club is at the Musa Public Library at 3.30 p.m. every Thursday from 3.35 p.m. Um, most kids should be accompanied by an adult who are under 12 years of age so they can step on those Legos and hurt their feet. Um, so Climate Smart uh, Missoula Monthly Meetup um, so Climate Smart Missoula is an organization that's been around for a little over a year now and they do monthly meetups um, um, so this is another one from 5 to 7, and it's going to be at Nash uh, Imagination Brewing Company. To get involved each month, they will focus on discussion on one of the, uh, the buckets or focal areas of our community climate action plan. Bring and share your ideas, connect with partners and other uh, to learn of the current climate effect in Missoula. Short presentation at 5.15 p.m., and they're going to have some light snacks. Um, Ropes Course Open Climate McCormick Park. McCormick Park is another one of those great parks that you guys got to go check out. A lot of things are happening there. A lot of things that happen. They have softball. They have all sorts of stuff. But in terms of this, they have an open climb. So they have a interesting, they have a cool little climbing rope, which is just adjacent to their current aquatic center. And you get to do it from just hang out and climb to new heights, 5 to 8 p.m. every Thursday throughout the summer. They have $5 suggested donation, but they will not turn people away if they cannot afford the $5. Meet the Douglas Nursing Nook. Interested in finding out about local services to help you during pregnancy? Or after pregnancy, birth, um, and postpartum depression, you can learn. You can come every first Thursday to an open house style meeting and mingle with the local birth and postpartum Douglas and other growing families. Get your questions answered and while you enjoy light refreshments and relaxed and welcoming environment. And it's going to be at the Nursing Nook, and it's called Meet the Doug. Dulas. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought it's a Douglas because um, it usually is Douglas. Uh, Scandinavian American Folk Music Concert is going to be at the Missoula uh, Senior Citizen Center, which is just off of, uh, I want to say it's 6th and Higgins. Yes, corner of 6th and Higgins. Uh, Scandinavian um, Concert will be talented inspiration fiddlers and a guitarist, the trio Christian a Buggy, Jamie Foxx, um, no relation. Um, and Morton Alfred uh, Hurup is making a comeback to Missoula during their tour across the U.S. Minimum admission is $5 in cash is collected at the door. Seating is provided, but the uh, audience of all ages include children are welcome to move and dance around because they have a nice little dance floor and a giant mirror. It looks like they can do some ballets there as well. Um, here are some of your music events that are happening. Um, D -d 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 John Floridas is also playing at the Imagination um, Brewing Company tomorrow night as well. So you guys can check him out. It's some great music. I love his music. He, he's a wonderful musician here in Missoula, and he was voted like the one, number one musician according to the Missoula Independent. Um, country Dance Lessons with Instructor Kathy Clark. Once again, live jazz at the Plonk, Honeycomb at Monks, Open Mic at the Broadway, Rock and Karaoke by hosted by 
uh, hosted by Aaron B. Rocks at the Dark Horse. So if you didn't get your uh, karaoke tonight, you have still have that karaoke at the Dark Horse, which is just right next to the Sunrise Saloon. Caroline Keys and the Land Splitters is going to be at the Top Out Lounge. It's going to be some folk music. So you have that Scandinavian folk music happening in the Senior Center. And if you still have that folk fix, you guys can go check out the Top Hat Lounge that night to listen to some more folk type music as well of course i'm assuming that um, if i if they ever hear me talking the scandinavian folk f people will be like it's not like that kind of folk music so anyways um that's basically it for all your events that are happening in and around missoula i don't have much more to talk about um thank you for joining me um i want to and i want to remind you once again that um that the uh, missoula agent service is doing a jewelry sale um so i'm going to show you their webpage page one more time. This is at MissoulaAsianServices.org and this Saturday sale is a week from this Saturday which is Saturday June 10th and it's going to go from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at St. Anthony's Church which is just off uh, it's um it's basically off of Brooks and it's on um, Tremont Street. That's the word I was looking for. I was thinking of something else, but it's Tremont Street. You basically, if you're going down Higgins, you turn off to Brooks and you basically, it's it's basically you just take the first right or you take the, you go up uh, um, west or north um, after uh, of the light that's on Brook Street. It's the kind of like the Brook Street right next to Cafe Dolce. You can probably just turn up there from there from the light and you, you can't miss it. You really can't miss it. It's going to be a jewelry sh sale that helps benefit the Missoula Agent Services. Um, thanks again to Kim and Ann for joining me this morning. And thank you for joining me. And if you've stayed this long to listen to me, listen to me a little more. Uh, you can like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. And you can also subscribe to my page um, on YouTube to watch this video, interviews, and more, including the finale of my Stop Motion Anthology. I'm not really teared up about it. It's just less work for me, basically. So <laughs> for Wake Up Missoula, I'll see you guys Friday, June 2nd, and I'll talk everything you need to know about what's happening in and around Missoula in terms of your um, city council report, dubbing stuff, and the flagship Friday video of the week. So without further ado, um, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>